Hey Techies, Anthony from Masters.net here, and today we are building a scratch drive for my rendering computer. It's a computer I use to record most of these uh, videos, as well as, you know, render all the videos together. So first off, I uh, got a Kingston 250-gig uh, M2. Uh, Kingston is probably one of my favorite memory producers. Uh, SanDisk, obviously. Uh, Samsung's good. There's a couple others that I've started trying, and I have had positive results. Uh, so far, I haven't experienced a bad uh, drive from anybody. So, But Kingston is like for video games and for computer stuff. I'm good with them. So nothing fancy going on there. But then I also bought, this is from uh, Gla uh, Glow Trends. i uh, never heard of them before, but this was the highest rated expansion card on YouTube. Uh, comes with a screwdriver. Uh, comes with a smaller back plate. Uh, of course, it comes with a, um, a uh, thermal cover here to dissipate heat uh, heat sink in other words as you see and uh, some instructions and then of course here is the card itself and the deal with this is is a scratch drive for my computer so uh, I can basically render faster I originally started using the scratch drive that was also my OS drive which is a mistake you should never do that so um, this is to basically go, well, I don't want to keep using my hard drive because it's super slow for rendering and for recording. So if I do basically a throwaway M2 drive that I don't care about, this is 30 bucks. Uh, and then, um, you know, I basically render what I need, record what I need onto this drive and then move it off. And uh, basically it'll always pretty much be empty. So I mean, if you understand, what, if you're familiar with video editing or whatever, you know what I mean when I say scratch drive. Because, again, your scratch drive should never be a drive that you are actively using. Because it's, you know, it's going to get war and tore. It's basically like if you're mining Bitcoin, you don't want to use the, you know, processor or computer or graphics card or whatever that is going to be for other uses because it's going to wear out a lot faster. So that is essentially what we're doing here. So I'm going to open this up. And I did bring a pair of scissors. And uh, installation should be fairly simple. And I'll... See what the instructions say about mounting the heat sink. Uh, if I need thermal paste, I do have some left over from the uh, CPU upgrade on my other computer. It's uh, let's see, go on here. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it's making a mess. And so the installation is fairly simple. Uh, we just uh, slide it in here. Let me grab the stand out first. So there is the screw here that is going to hold the drive down. So we'll make sure we move that. I have a feeling this isn't magnetic. So let's just uh, do that. Yeah, not magnetic. But we know where the screw went. We'll slide this drive in. Just pop it in there. And then we will put the screw back in. And the screw being so small is not uh, helpful for what I would like here. But uh, let's put it in. Okay, just tighten it enough to hold it in there, that's all you need. So then let's take the instructions here for this heat sink and see what we have to do with it. I suppose this is a piece of tape here. Uh, hopefully that is what it's planning to use. I did not read ahead. So, um, which is funny, the rubber bands were never around these things, although, oh, yeah, there's even um, slides on it. So let's see, um... So, oh, I'm reading the wrong page. Okay, it says remove the clear film on both sides. Uh, place the pad on the SSD. Well, see, I got to take the SSD back off, or no, I don't. Okay. Oh no. Okay, wait, what? And then put the heat sink on the thermal pad. Okay. So already installed the the, uh, the the thermal pad. Okay, and then the heat sink on top, and then slide on. Okay, I see. So I probably shouldn't have screwed it in. <laughs> so let's uh, undo that real quick. Um, so let's see. Let's move this out of the way. Is this bendy? No, it's a sticker on top. Okay, so step one, remove the tape.
It's on there? Okay. It's on there. Then remove the other side. Here we go. Take that. I'm going to wipe this piece off, make sure there's nothing on it. Good enough, and we will put that down on here. It's not perfect, but it's on there. Okay. Then let's see. Next step these things. So that's misleading. Hopefully it's still fine. Because you can see I hit a little bit of metal here. Make sure there's nothing there. Huh, okay. So now let's install it on the board. There we go. Make sure it's all pushed in. The screw is over here. Now the total price of this stuff was only like forty dollars. So I mean one would hope it would work, but you know that little screw up there, but can't imagine it being a problem. Okay, it's on there. Looks decent, looks like it's in. Yep. So this is going to go in the 4x8 slot that I have. So it's about two slots away from my graphics card, so hopefully it gets enough ventilation. But uh, this is what it'll look like when we get to it. So, hey. Um, so what we're going to do is take apart uh, my desktop here that I use for rendering. I'm going to unplug this cord here. And uh, we are going to simply plug this in. And hopefully it all works out. So I'm gonna stick this right here. And uh, my dusty, dusty boy. Uh, I will put up a picture, or well, you can see the port arrangement here, because we're not gonna zoom in to hear anything. I only have so many hands. Um, so then essentially, I'm gonna slide this over. And this is one of those um, Dell cases where I just have to pop a back panel. And as long as I'm careful with it, I should be able to lay it down. There you go. Pop the panel. And this comes right off. So, there is one 4x8 port here, and I have a screwdriver. So what I need to do is lift this up, or actually, I think the plate is, yeah, it's on a, a piece here. Um, yeah, so I have to lift this port up so I have to unlock everything. And there we go. So before I forget too far, unplug the power supply. So make sure that cord's unplugged. And I'm going to discharge it by pressing the power button in the front. I have this uh, habit of pressing it a few times. That way I don't see anything happen. And it's not unlocked. There's only two of those. Here we go. Looks good, okay. So, the shielding doesn't require a screw. I forgot about that. I brought the screwdriver for nothing, but rather be safe than sorry. Slide this into the port. One thing I dislike is you have to be like dead on, slide it in evenly. There we go, got it in. Now I can close this back up. Oh, make sure no wires are in the way. Definitely got uh, my mouse cord in there. There we go. Make sure no other wires in the way. Relock it. And uh, move this out of the way here. Come on, cord. 
And that is pretty much it. I simply just slide the cover back up, make sure nothing else was pulled, doesn't look like it. Slide this back on. Pull this lever. Assuming I have this on correctly, it's usually better to put it on when it's sitting sideways. But we'll see. There we go. Turn this back upwards. Watch my router fall. And we'll plug it in. And let's uh, go to the computer and see what's going on. So now that we have it installed, what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and uh, make sure the computer sees it. So our first step is to, actually I think I'm going to go into settings here. And uh, we're going to uh, just go straight to disk management. Um, yeah, right there. And um, here is the screen. And you can see it's right here. That is the new drive. And uh, that is what we want to uh, format. And uh, we want it to be in a simple value, but it's not giving us the option. Because we have to initialize it first, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, because it sees it's a Kingston, which, which is great. Because it tells us this is an official device. Because uh, you worry about buying, like... Um, like the scam stuff online, so, you know, because apparently people are faking Amazon, uh, you know, whatnot on here, and uh, it looks fine to me, I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to initialize the disk drive. Uh, we want to do, let's see, what do the other ones say here? Uh, actually, I don't know what the other ones say here. Uh, basic, simple... I mean, it's not going to be a master boot drive. I don't think so. Uh, partition table. Huh. It's a good question. I never give it that much thought. Because <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, this is the type we want right here. It's the GPT. This allows for file si uh, sizes bigger than 2 terabytes. The MBR, or master boot record, is actually for older 32-bit computers. And this is a 64-bit computer, so we are going to do this. And as you see, it is now um, done. It's, you know, it's initiated, I guess. And uh, we are going to do a simple volume. And uh, um, is that the whole thing? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. And next. And we're going to assign it D. So that's exactly what I want. And... Uh, yeah, um, yeah, we're going to call this Scratch Drive, I think. Scratch. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing on it, so we don't really need to do much else. Everything else seems to be fine, yeah. Exactly what we want. And finish. And we now have a D drive. And this screen pops up, which shows my drives right here. And here is my Scratch Drive. So... Uh, other than the scratches I put on the scratch drive, it is exactly what I need it to be, and effectively it is set up. Tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video. Did you like what you saw, and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.